What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds where today is an exciting day, but it's also a day that I'm like, I'm really upset with myself. I am, I am actually exceptionally upset with myself. Um, so I bought a new Jeep. I traded in my Corvette for the Jeep and I documented the whole process. This is all on video for you guys to watch. From the day I drove the Corvette up to the dealership traded it in, and then after trading it into them, I pointed out that somebody had rear-ended it while I was on vacation and damaged the front bumper. It was it was actually a really entertaining video. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Caleb was the guy that sold me the new Jeep. They loaned me a brand new Jeep right off their lot, a beautiful blue Jeep. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you've seen that blue Jeep. They loaned me a brand new one because I went in there and ordered one straight from uh, the manufacturer. So I had to wait for this new Jeep to come in off the truck. In the meantime, they loaned me a Jeep to get me through until my new Jeep arrived. And I documented the whole thing, the whole experience. And, you know, sometimes I can be a little manic. I'm not going to lie. My desktop on my computer gets a little cluttered and I do some spring cleaning. Well, apparently during one of my uh, spring cleaning episodes, I managed to delete all of it. The whole thing, the footage is all gone. So now it's not there. So I'm going to replace that footage with a little bit of footage from the Coronet before we get into the Jeep. We found that uh, we need a part. This part right here, anybody want to guess what it is? Well, there it is. It's, it's a part that you're going to see in a future video I'm going to attempt to replace to hopefully get it running on all eight cylinders. If you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Auto Auction Rebuilds, uh, you probably already know what that part is and you probably already know why she doesn't run on eight cylinders right now. Now, before we get into the Jeep, I just have to do a cold start. I haven't started it today. I've been driving this car every day for the last several days. I don't know what the miles were when we first started, but if you look at the first video probably of this, I think I, hold on, let me try to get the camera in here a little bit better. Uh, I'm sure somewhere we've got mileage so we can document how far I've driven, but it's got 85, 810 on it right now. Let's uh, let the electric fuel pump prime. And, oh, there we go. She normally starts first turn of the key, normally. Put, 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 put. Yeah, I was right all along. I knew there was a misfire on the passenger side and I suspected it was cylinder number two, and I was a hundred percent right about it. I've been driving her around on seven cylinders thinking she was running great. <laughs> That's the great thing about these classic American cars, man. These things will run broken better and longer than anything else in the world. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Yours may vary, but anyway, you're not here to see the Dodge Coronet today. We're here to talk about a Jeep. So please forgive me because I was doing like a camera trick where we transitioned from my blue Jeep that they loaned me and it was like, hey, now we're gonna jump in to the new Jeep. Unfortunately, since all of that is gone, uh, it's gonna be a little awkward. Let's jump into it. It just like magic, it's only been like a week and a half, but just like magic, we have a brand new Fresh off of the truck, Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport. And while that may sound like it's something really impressive, like it's unlimited, it's sport. Uh, let's just be honest, guys. An unlimited sport means bottom of the barrel, no frills, cheapest of the cheap. It means you don't want anything fancy. <laughs> 
and that's fine because that is exactly what I bought it for. I did not opt for anything fancy at all on this. It comes with absolutely nothing. It doesn't have power windows. It doesn't have power locks. It doesn't have power mirrors. It doesn't have a touch screen. It doesn't have Sirius XM. It doesn't have off-road tires. It doesn't have remote start. The only option this has is an automatic transmission. That's literally it. Uh, it has an eight speed automatic. That is what I wanted. I don't want a stick shift right now. I'm not in the mood for a stick shift at this point. It's got 33 miles on the odometer. Hopefully that comes out all right. 33 miles, it is the 3.6 liter, if I remember correctly. Okay, so I was hoping that it was gonna have off-road tires. It doesn't. It's got Michelins, which are great street tires. And of course, you know, being that it's four wheel drive anyway, it's very capable. You can definitely get through some terrain with that, but you know, realistically, we're gonna need to change some things. Now, luckily, since I was anticipating this thing arriving, I have already put items in my cart on Four Wheel Parts website, which include a new set of smoked 17s, uh, beautiful wheels, some 35, I think they're uh, KA0 or K02, I can't remember, like General Grabber K02 or something like that. Uh, truthfully, I don't remember exactly what they are. I just remember that the size of them was 35s. I'm not sure that you can fit 35s on this at stock height. I think uh, you have to lift it. And in that case, I do have a lift kit on standby. I'm not trying to jack it up four inches or six inches. Guys, I'm not rock crawling. But I do have a two and a half inch lift kit that comes with the Fox shocks. It's got all the extension arms, everything included. I've also got a set of running boards that I think are gonna look good with this color scheme. I've also got a new front bumper uh, that will get rid of this plastic and it goes to a beautiful metal bumper with a winch with a light bar built in. It's all one big beautiful design, fog lights and everything included. So I think with the new aggressive all-terrains, the new smoked wheels, the new bumper, winch, light bar, running boards, I think it's going to look really good. I'll be honest with you though, guys, I'm not really wanting to lift it if I don't have to. So if they tell me that 35s are going to be too big for the current lift and I got to go down to like 33s, most likely I'll go ahead and drop down to 33s instead of putting the lift on it. I really don't want to turn this thing into something that's going to have that Jeep death wobble or that's going to be uncomfortable to drive as a daily driver. Um, I need it to be good for a daily as well as being capable off-road as well. So this is what we've been waiting for, guys. It was cheap. It really was. Dirt cheap. You're talking about a brand new Jeep. It's got a like a three-year, 36,000-mile bumper-to-bumper, and it's got a five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. And it was all for the low, low price of 31300 and change. And in my opinion, for something as capable as a Jeep, that's cheap, guys. That's It's a cheap Jeep. And there's your 3.6. I did not want the four cylinder. I know it's a turbo four. I just, I don't feel like a Jeep should have a four banger in it. I really don't. So there she is. And uh, here's your little window sticker before I end up getting it all crinkled up. 2020 Unlimited Sport 4x4. Base price $31,795. There were some discounts on it. So I, if I remember correctly, I got it for right at $31,000. $300, something like that. Now this says, this is lying. So this says the total price with optional equipment, which is the eight speed 850 RE transmission, the black three piece hard top, freedom panel, storage bag, rear window defroster, rear window wiper washer, uh, Sirius XM. Okay. It does have Sirius. I didn't know that. That is awesome. So total was 37,630. So they hooked me up over here. Yeah, with 100%. You guys hooked me up because I, I only paid 31 something for it. Yeah. Okay, so I saved like $5,000 on this damn thing. Okay, I'm happy. I'm happy. And with that, guys, I got to go inside. There's some more paperwork I got to sign. And then we can come back and talk about the Jeep a little more here in just a few. What do you think of the Jeep, man? You love it? Uh, that stick shift, I didn't enjoy driving it, guys. They gave me a loaner, which I think is really awesome. That's something we're pointing out, too. Yeah. A lot of people on Instagram were like, they gave you a brand new loaner? Yeah. No, they didn't. They gave me two of them. Yeah, they gave yeah, me two, yeah. two brand new loaner Jeeps, guys. So listen, it's not sponsored. They didn't pay me anything and they sure as hell didn't give me any additional discounts. I got the same deal everybody else gets. This is just how they treat their customers. So you got to come over and holler at Caleb, man. 
Caleb over here at David Stanley Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. It's a mouthful, man. Come holler at him. Tell him Randy from Auto Auction Rebuild sent you or AR, uh, AR Auto Sales sent you. They'll hook you up. They'll take care of you. Come get you a new Jeep. Then you could be like me. All right, I got to go sign some paperwork, guys. We'll be back in just a few minutes. And just like that, it's a brand new day. We're back home. The Jeep is home. The Hellcat is where she's been living for the past week in the street. Literally living in the street, out in the elements, rained on. <laughs> I almost feel, excuse me, I almost feel, I almost feel real bad for the old girl, man. She gave up her garage space to the, uh, to the coronet. That doesn't make any sense. It does to me. I can justify it. The coronet is a rarer car. It's hard to find. It would be hard to replace it. Uh, so I put the coronet in the garage. The Hellcat, well, not nearly as, as rare. You can definitely replace it. And I owe less on it than what it's worth. So if something were to happen to it, well, I mean, I just collect a payout and I go buy another Hellcat, I guess. We got the big horn over here. And it looks like somebody bumped into me at some point. I, you got to love this, man. I mean, it's not a big deal, but right here, somebody definitely scraped, bumped into my back bumper. And they didn't bother to tell me about it. But, you know, it's a work truck, so not going to get too upset over it. But come on, man. Now, they did the same thing to my Corvette, too. It seems that I'm pretty sure it's happening right here because my Corvette was all the way in my driveway. And somebody managed to rear end it and damage the bumper. Same thing with my truck here. Thankfully, nothing's happened to the Hellcat yet. I'm honestly, guys, I'm so tired of living in the city. I am ready to move down to ARHQ as soon as that house is ready. I think we're gonna, we're gonna start packing it up and getting the hell out of here. Sick of the city, guys, absolutely sick of it. Anyway, here's the Jeep, she's home. I'm about to take it down for a lot of upgrades, guys. Um, I'm waiting for a text back from the dealership to tell me to go ahead and bring it in. But next time you see it, the next video of this is gonna be modded. All right, it's gonna have tinted windows, it's gonna have 35s. It's gonna have a two and a half inch lift. And I know everybody's like four inch, six inch. I'm not trying to do that, guys. I'm not trying to do that. So two and a half inch lift, running boards, and well, we'll see, we'll see what happens after that. I think that's all the dealership's gonna do for me, or all we've agreed to do was the tires, wheels, lift. And obviously they'll calibrate the speedometer to work with the bigger wheels or the bigger tires. The wheels are still gonna be 17s on 35s. I prefer more meat on your tires. Um, we could have gone with 20s, obviously. We had a much bigger rim, much bigger wheel. Probably would have looked really cool, but I am really more about more meat on the tire. So I opted to go with 17s with 35s. Running boards, tinted windows, two and a half inch lift, and that way I retain my factory warranty. I don't want to lose my warranty. Next, we'll take it to probably four wheel parts. And four wheel parts, I don't know. I've considered changing the grill to that angry eyes grill. You know what I mean? I've considered it, but honestly, this color is so awesome, man. I, I am so in love with this color. I don't really want to change the grill. So I think we'll probably leave the grill alone but I definitely want to go with an upgraded metal bumper with the light bar with a winch in it. That will be done from uh, most likely four wheel parts. May even go so far as to get the back bumper done as well so that it kind of matches it. I haven't really decided guys. So in an upcoming video, I'm wondering how long it's gonna take them to do this. May put a tow hitch on it. I don't plan on towing anything with it though. So yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Probably, most likely, the next video you see of the Jeep, she is going to be looking a whole lot different than this. So I hope you guys stay tuned and join me when we come back probably a week to two weeks from when this video comes out. You know, you got to give them time to get all the parts and get everything done. Hopefully, you're going to like the mods. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you like it or not. As long as I like it, that's all that matters. But I love sharing things with you guys and you guys enjoying what I'm doing. You know what I mean? That's the whole point of this. If you guys don't enjoy the video content, then it's not nearly as fun for me to do this kind of stuff. 
she's a good jeep guys and i think uh oh is that a big scratch i hope that comes out um i think truthfully thirty thousand dollars or thirty one thousand dollars out the door I know there's a lot of people that have already complained on Instagram about uh, it doesn't have power locks, it doesn't have power mirrors. How could a 2020 anything for $30,000 not have these options? It's a Jeep, guys. I think a lot of people are, are looking at this uh, as, a, as a daily driven car and you have to have all of these options. Guys, I've been daily driving the Cornette in the garage here. It doesn't have any of those options, guys. It doesn't. It doesn't have power locks. It doesn't have power windows. And you know what? It doesn't even have working air conditioning at this point. And I get along in the Coronet just fine. So I, I, I didn't buy this with the intent of it being my daily driver. I bought this as, yes, it could be a daily driver, but first and foremost, it's a toy. I was looking at those side-by-sides, quads and stuff to take out and have a good time in. And when you're talking 12, 15,000 and up for one of these side by side type things, it didn't make any sense to me. I'm like, for $30,000 plus a few mods, you know, a few upgrades here and there, we can have one hell of a capable side by side quad four wheeler. Except it's not just that, it's actually a car and it has air conditioning. And you can like drive it across the country if you wanted to and go play wherever you want to. You can't do that with a quad. You can't do that with a side-by-side. -side. You got to load it up, strap it down and take it with you. This can get itself there. So I thought, you know what? It'd be great to have a fun little toy for the channel. And that's what this is. It's nothing more than a toy that you can daily drive if you want to, which is why I opted out of a six inch lift. That's too much toy, not enough daily drive. Got to find a happy medium here, guys, and I think you're going to like it when she comes back. So with that, we are going to get out of here. I got things to do, man. We're going to take this bad boy to go get a few tasteful mods and upgrades, and I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. And then maybe we'll go see if we can find a mud hole somewhere and have a little fun. What else are you going to do? Brand new Jeep. Brand spanking new off of the truck. Now we're going to go take it and have it ripped apart. And then, once we have all these beautiful, shiny, garage queen bro-dozer parts installed, then we're going to go actually get it muddy. It sounds like a plan to me. We got to get 500 miles knocked off of this first, though. That's, that's something I almost forgot about. You do have a break-in period of 500 miles. We want to do that before we go, you know, having too much fun. We're not going to do anything super crazy, guys. I'm not going to go climb mountains. We're not going to drive it through a pond or a lake. I just wanted something to have a little fun and be able to share that experience with you guys. If you enjoyed the content, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. I would truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I would appreciate that as well. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram where you're going to see pictures of things like this and the mods done to it long before you're ever going to see it on, on YouTube. You can find that auto auction rebuilds link in the description as always. Now with that, I'm going to get out of here. Stay safe out there, everybody. I will catch you all very soon in the next one.